But uh, I, in the, in the uh, epistle to the Romans, chapter 14, I want to do a little bit of a different message this morning because, you know, most of the times you read a passage and then you've got three or four points and that's what you do. That's, that's the normal sermon. But today it's going to be a little uh, abnormal. We're, uh, we're just going to go down through the passage together as we go. I'm not going to read it first. So I'm going to pray now just so that our hearts will be prepared for the word. Father, I, I thank you this morning for your word. Allow me, Lord, to bring this out the way you would have me to so that people will get it and understand it. Lord, the idea, Father, that we have a responsibility to our neighbor, even as Brother Williams said, we're to love the the neighbor as ourselves. And this passage that we're reading today illustrates that as well as anything. I just thank you for it, and may it have fruit in our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. We're going to start in verse number one. Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to disputes over doubtful things. For one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. I always thought that, but I didn't prove it. Are you here this morning? Oh, yeah. I'm a meat and potatoes man myself. I like to eat, but I must have meat with my taters and my gravy. So, Wilberforce, go fetch your horse and bring him in for lunch. Hallelujah. Apparently, y'all don't remember that that song. A loin for me, a loin for you. We'll barbecue the saddle, too. So Wilbur Forrest, go fetch your horse and bring him in for lunch. Anyway, I actually saw something one time, and it was a billboard sign, and it said Jesus was a vegetarian. And I, I thought, how in the world did he observe the Passover if he was a vegetarian? Didn't he have to eat some lamb? And how about all that fish he was always fixing, you know, and eating? I, don't, I just didn't quite get that. Uh, uh, go, I don't know. Anyway, I don't think he was, especially after reading what the Apostle Paul had to say. And then he goes on to say this, Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat. So we can't despise people who don't eat the same way that we do. There are still some Christians out there who observe dietary laws of the Old Testament, which I believe have passed, and I believe this passage tells us that. But they still do it. I don't make fun of them. I'm not going to invite them over for for pork on Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Or on Saturday, as most of those would probably be observing their worship time. Uh, It goes on to say, "Let him who and let not him who does not eat judge him who eats, for God has received them." Who are you to judge another's servant? And that's something that we have to key in on. If we're serving God, if somebody else is serving God, they belong to him. It's not our, our place to, to beat the slaves, to beat the servants. It's not our place to, to take people to task. Uh, we are to point out things when people are in error, but, you know, we don't just keep going to them and over and over and hitting them about stuff. And it says, to his own master he stands or fall. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. Some people go to church on Saturday because they feel like that's, you know, something for them. We believe that, that the Lord arose, you know, and we observe him on the first day of the week. It said this in the Bible in the New Testament where they, where they met on the first day. But if somebody goes to church on Saturday, I don't care if they're worshiping the Lord God, amen? If they're worshiping Jesus, I don't can. In fact, I can worship God on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Amen? Because all days are days that we're supposed to be serving God, not just one day. He goes on to say, he who observes the day observes it to the Lord, and he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks, and he who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat and gives God thanks. If you're fasting, you still are in communion with God, whether you're eating or not eating. Amen? Whether you're following some restricted diet, whether you feel like you're only supposed to eat vegetables for whatever reason, you still do it unto the Lord. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. Amen? And if we die, we die to the Lord. Amen? No amens. Not a person in the room. Hallelujah. We must, we, them, them slow drizzles must put you guys out. That's all there is to it. Hallelujah. We get a toad strangler going here. 
For to this end Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another any more, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. We're, we're, decisions that other people make before the Lord and the decisions that they have are their decisions. They're their, that's what they feel like they're supposed to do. We're not supposed to judge them for that. Amen? But even more so, as we read on in the rest of this passage, that was the law of liberty. In the law of love, we find that our actions affect other people, and we have to be careful how we do things simply because of them. Let us, let us read on. It says, I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. So he's talking about the animals that uh, were unclean in the Old Testament. And there were still people who wanted to observe the Jewish laws. Now, uh, this, this passage here, this letter was written to the Romans, it says, uh, but chances are they were believers in Christ. And he's basically convinced that if you want to eat a good pulled pork sandwich, you can. How many of you like that? You like it in about 15 minutes, amen? No, you like it right now. Don't lie to me. Hallelujah. You know, if you want to eat, eat something, then you can eat it. But he goes on to say this, Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one whom Christ, for whom Christ died. I worked at a, at a restaurant one time. And uh, it's been a long time. I was in Bible school. And mainly I loaded plates which I, I had to cook some, and uh, I was a lousy cook. But they had a rule that if you didn't cook it right, you got to eat it. <laughs> so I had a reason for being a lousy cook, amen? Uh, I've never eaten fillets that much since then, I'll tell you. But anyway, there was this gentleman there who was of a totally different religion, and that religion does not eat pork. And he came in one day, and they had cooked up this big pork roast, and he thought it was beef. And he started eating on it, and then when he realized, he heard somebody talking that it was pork, he about had a cow, which, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and he wished he'd had a cow just then, but it was pork. And so then, I don't know, it was very strange. Then he tried to get all of us who were standing around to eat that pork. It was like uh, he wasn't going to sin alone. And so he had to want to try to make all of us sin right with him. And, you know, I was cantankerous as could be anyway. So I had me some pork right then, man, because it didn't bother me. But, you know, as I go back and judge the passage, had it been in the different circumstances and I set pork in front of somebody who didn't eat it, I would actually be causing him distress. And I shouldn't do that. Amen. Not if it's a Christian brother and they have some dietary thing about whatever. Uh, that's why when I come to your house and you set spaghetti in front of me. All right, well, maybe it's not a religious thing. I'm anti-pasta or whatever that is. But, uh, you know, I, I don't. I, so I, I, I will eat spaghetti. But most of those curly noodle things and all that, man, I don't even want to get near that stuff. It just uh, looks like pigtails and... Uh, you know, I don't, I don't care for any, but that's just a preference. That's different than what we're talking about here, amen? We're talking about people who have some, some feeling from God they're not supposed to do something. You know, some people feel like they're not supposed to cut their hair. Some people apparently feel like they're not supposed to cut their beard, Jason. Some of the people feel like, how are they? Yeah, amen, amen. We've got, we got a few people around like that. So, you know, people have different feelings that they feel like the God, God's dealing with them about. Well, if God's dealing with them, don't use your liberty to destroy the work that he's doing. You can't judge them for what they're doing. So you just basically, you don't tempt them. And you don't, do, you know, when I got saved, I'd go back and hang out with my friends. And uh, 
every time they got up to go to the refrigerator, they'd ask me on their way, you want a beer? You want a beer? You want a beer? Now, having a beer wouldn't have sent me to hell. Yeah, they offer you all kinds of things. I never had so many free drugs offered to me until after I got saved, amen? Nobody ever gave me free drugs before I got saved. If I'd have had the beer, it wouldn't have done anything as far as my relationship with God if I was doing it in a clean conscience, if it didn't bother me. But uh, what would it do to them? Oh, he's a Christian, but look at him now. I actually failed one time. I was at it. I was at it. We were playing a game, and uh, we're all sitting around the table, and they started passing the left-handed cigarettes. And, uh, you know, I mean, I just passed it for them, but the more I passed it, the slower it got as it went by. The next thing I knew, I was, I was sitting there getting high with these guys. And the next day, I was, I was crestfallen for what I'd done. I was, I was depressed. The, the Lord had me go to each one of them individually and repent to them for my bad witness. I could have destroyed their, their walk with God that they didn't even have yet. I could have thrown them off. Now, one of those guys went on to become a preacher himself. Amen. And uh, a couple of the others had tried church here and there. But uh, you don't know the effect that you have on people. And if we're going to be Christian, we ought to act Christian. And that includes the law of love, which means that we don't take our liberty and destroy someone else. Read on. It says, therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil, which is what happens. You know, you know, Billy Graham goes somewhere. He only drinks water. He wouldn't, he wouldn't stand around with, the, with a Diet Coke in a glass because people could say he was having a mixed drink with everybody else, so he didn't do it. He goes on to say, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. How many can say amen to that? All right. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. So if we walk in righteousness and peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, people recognize that. It's approved. People see it. Let us there, therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify or build up another. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure, and it is evil for the man who eats with offense. So if he feels convicted of that and you force him into it or you set that in front of him and you know it willingly, then you're actually causing him to sin because he's doing something he doesn't feel right about. It is good neither to eat nor drink wine nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. For whatever it is, not from faith is sin. You got a liberty to eat pork? That's fine. You don't invite the non-pork and people. More, non, the pork and beans? No. <laughs> uh, the people that don't eat it over for pork. Uh, you feel like you can have a beer after you mow grass? And you're not condemned by that? What am I to say about it? Amen? What can I say about that? Is beer drinking right? Drunkenness isn't. And this is where the law of liberty slips. Because the law of liberty says, I feel like I can do this. Well, people who have giants in their background, like me and others, and you know the things that you used to do, and you know it was like Lay's potato chips, and you could, could not only have one, amen, you got to stay away from that stuff. I went, I went, the first place I went to witness was at a bar, and three of the four people in there I not only knew but was related to. I played poker every Saturday night. I had, no, I had no feeling at all that poker was wrong. I went to the pastor of the church I was going to, and I said, what do you think about playing poker? And he said, well, he said, there really isn't a whole lot in the Bible about, about gambling. There's stuff about greed. Well, I wasn't playing poker to get money. I was, that was a pastime. Yeah, before, before I started going to church, it was a pastime to drink beer. That was before I took up golf, which is what I found out most golfers drink their beer on golf courses. I didn't realize that. Uh, I'd probably played golf a lot earlier in my life until after I waited until after I got saved. But I, uh, 
you know, I, I prayed about it, and I lost 12 weeks in a row, and I felt like, hmm, maybe the Lord wants me to stop playing poker. You know, there's things that we do that we may feel okay about. I had a woman say to me, well, I don't think, any, I don't think anybody who plays poker every Saturday night ought to be telling me I shouldn't be smoking pot. Well, that opened my eyes to something because I realized that her standard is a standard that most of us probably hold that gambling is not a good thing. How many believe gambling is not a good thing? It's not a good thing. People throw away their paychecks and don't feed their kids and all kinds of things because it becomes an addiction, because it becomes something. I'm not going to pull the cards out and offer them a good card game, even if I know I'm going to win. Hallelujah. I used to do pretty good until the Lord got on me, so... I mean, I was ahead up until those 12 weeks were over because I kept track of that kind of stuff for some reason. I wasn't greedy, but I was, I was thrifty. Hallelujah. I paid attention to what I had. Amen. But we're not to make our brothers stumble. They come over to your house, and they, and they open up your refrigerator and see your Miller Lite in there. What are, what are they going to think? Well, you know, you can bl- blame your wife if you want, but hallelujah. They, they, amen. They see your wine coolers in there. What are they going to, what are they going to, are they going to, you know, we can't make our brothers stumble. But there is a difference between someone having a liberty with something and somebody being enslaved by it. Amen. There's a difference between, you know, some of you can go out of here and I, well, the only thing I got out of that message today is the pastor said I could drink beer if I feel like it. I'm not saying you can drink beer if you feel like it. But if we read this passage of Scripture, the point is, is the guy that checks you out at the store going to get closer to the Lord when you go through there? Is the people who carry off your trash and see the empty bottles and cans, is that going to draw them to the Lord? What effect are you going to have on other people on what they're trying to accomplish or what you want to see God accomplish in their lives. If we back this all up a little bit and go back to chapter 13, verse 11, and we read these four verses, it says, And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, but not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the flesh, to fulfill its lusts. Generally speaking, most people, you know, I've met people over the years who said that they can have one and it doesn't bother them and all this kind of stuff. Maybe that's true, but most people, it doesn't stop there, and it becomes an addiction, and they end up going down the wrong path, and we encourage that when we imbibe ourselves, when we do those things. You know, I thought revelry was like partying. Woo! I didn't know what revelry was, and I came across it in another scripture the other day, and uh, it's not what they blow in the morning to get soldiers up. <laughs> Is it, Rick? Just thought <laughs> It basically means pleasure-seeking, being hedonistic. You just want to have fun. And I know you girls just want to have fun. But actually, people who are seeking to have fun all the time have trouble being serious about things. We, we're in a fight. We're in a war. We're soldiers who are supposed to be standing together, helping one another overcome the enemy and fight those giants together. We're not supposed to be encouraging people to go back into past sins, to go back into the slavery, the bondage of the past, to get them back in, 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 in things that, that they gave up and want to get out of. We're supposed to be encouraging them to go forward. We're supposed to put on the armor of light And we're supposed to stand together. We're supposed to put on Christ. And if we're wearing Christ, we're not going to take a chance of doing something that anybody who's watching us is going to think less of him for. Amen? So check your liberty. Remember about the law of love. The law of love trumps the law of liberty. You feel okay with it? 
What about everybody who's around you? What about your kids? What are they going to grow up thinking? What are they going to grow up doing? Well, Dad did it. Why can't I? Amen? And we have to struggle with that. But he says here, make no provision for the flesh. We'd, 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 we'd have a lot left problems if we just didn't go to the places. It's like the guy said, Pastor, I just can't help it. Every time I go to the bar, I can't help but drinking. He said, don't go to the bar. Amen? Draw your line. Don't go over it. Don't go past it. Don't make provisions for the flesh. You think, uh, oh, wouldn't it be good if I go see Sally Sue tonight? Well, don't go by Sally Sue's house. I can tell you right now, it isn't going to be a good thing. Amen? Especially if you're married to Mary Lou. We're blessed we have neither in this church, so I don't have to worry that anybody thinks I was t- <laughs> talking about Sally Sue. Hallelujah. We've had multiple altar calls today to slay giants and to deal with things. So, so today's ending of this message is, is basically, I just want you to reflect on something. Does your behavior encourage people to serve God? Or does it cause them to want to fall away from God? Does your behavior cause people to want to get closer or to get further away? Does your behavior offend people who are weak in conscience in some area of of observance of the law and all these other things? Or does it make make them grow stronger? Does your liberty cause other people to go back into bondage? Does your justification of sin make it right if indeed you're sinning? Because if you're not doing things with a clean conscience, then you are sinning. Amen? To him, it's an offense. To him, it's not good if he does it and doesn't trust it or believe it. We've got to do what we know we're supposed to do. You know what that is. I can't tell every individual in here everything that they're supposed to do and all that. But you know. We always know. Deep down, we know. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. Sin is sin. Love is love, and love doesn't cause others to mess up. Father, I just thank you for the people today. I thank you for your blessing to them and the ministry that you want to accomplish in their lives. I thank you, Father, for being with them. Cause them to prosper in every good work. I thank you, Lord, that if there's small things in our lives that we need to deal with just because of our neighbor, because of our friends, our family, our loved ones, because of those people we encounter, help us to do so. Help us to live right before God. Help us to live right before you. Help us to live what's in our hearts that we know we're supposed to do. Help us to deal with addictions. Help us to deal with sin. Help us to deal with our liberty if our liberty is causing others harm. And I thank you for it. I praise you for it. I thank you, Father, that we can live for you. And, Lord, I pray for all of us especially those of us who like all foods too much, which is many of us here, Lord. Help us to maintain a proper diet and exercise so that we can live healthy for you. And we thank you for that, Father. I pray, Lord, that the weight that so easily besets us, not to be the weight of our own fat and our bodies, because of what we've been pushing down our throats. And I ask, Father, that you help us all in the name of Jesus to be able to overcome any addictions with foods, those late-night snacks and those extra pieces of cheesecake because you don't want to see it go old the first day. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord, and we praise you for it. Be with us as we leave from this place. Be with us as we put those books out. And we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You notice I threw in that last thing. Yes, we are going to take some books out.